Have you ever been at your job, messed it up, and had to spend a lot of time, energy, and resources to clean that mess up? Welcome to the premise of The Killer, the newest film from David Fincher. Hello, my name is EJ, and welcome to Flickering Myth. In this video, we are going to be breaking down the brand new David Fincher thriller, drama, whatever the hell genre this movie fits into. I enjoyed it. We are going to be talking about The Killer. Simple. David Fincher is continuing his like long-standing relationship with Netflix by dropping The Killer, which will be coming out on the streaming service in the next few weeks. I happen to really enjoy David Fincher, specifically that era of like the, the late 90s to the early 2000s when I was getting Fight Club 7, we had a uh, Panic Room. This was an era of a filmmaker I enjoy, how he directed one of my favorite like murder mystery kind of crime thrillers, Zodiac. He is a director I absolutely love and respect, though his last Netflix outing, Mank, I was not a fan of, did not enjoy it, a bit too self-indulgent, a bit too just not my kind of cup of tea. So walking into The Killer, I was hesitant. It's like, okay, what's the new era of Fincher like? What's he going to be like when he's on Netflix? Is he going to be another mank? Or is he going to throw us back to his prime? To me, this is prime David Fincher. This would fit in right into like the fall of 1999. If they would drop this movie, this would be, the poster would be on every college film bros wall because it, it, it just has that aesthetic of 90s it's it, it there's a score the, the oh my god the, the Atticus Ross Trent Reznor score perfection as it always is when those two come together to make a score especially for a Fincher movie but it also has a great soundtrack a Portis head needle drop sold great but it also just has a very late 90s vibe I think right now with our hitman assassins movies we are so like John Wick pilled where everything has to be bombastic big 35 minute action set pieces with the loudest bumping soundtrack. This movie is like almost the complete opposite of it. It is a bit vibes. It's chiller. It's just going at its own pace. Some will call this movie lethargic. Some will call it pretty kind of slow, which it is, but I liked the mundane vibe of this. I liked getting to watch a hitman who has been in his career, obviously, for a very long time, have to try to, one, clean up a mess he made, and also get a slight bit of revenge for the cleanup crew of his own mess. Like, there was layers to this film that I really enjoyed, and it really spoke to me. I was enthralled by it. Yes, again, it is slow. It's not as action-y as you would expect it to be, but what was here is great acting some really interesting character work and one fight scene there is one fight scene for sure that is one of the most memorable of the year overall i think the killer is one of the better fincher movies out of recent memory and netflix's most interesting like action movie they've done in quite some time in the film, we follow Michael Fassbender playing our titular killer, who is a hitman pretty well established in his career. We're kind of dropped into not the origin story, not the end all be off is like kind of epic final mission. We're kind of just plopped into the middle of his career and we're following as he does a assignment that we believe should just be another kind of cakewalk for him. But something happens and this sends him on a path of having to fix the mistakes. And then also when he gets back home, Things have happened from the people he was hired by, and he is pissed, which sends him on a crazy revenge mission for his own self. Like, he's just like, I'm usually a hitman for other people. I'm going to be a hitman for myself right now. And we're going, watching him, like, strategically find person after person who kind of affected his case and did something that he did not want them to do so he's going to go by and basically kill each and every one of them this reminded me it's very much structured like the graphic novel comic book it feels inspired by but it's very much a video game we're going through boss levels we go to the final boss and it's not the final boss battle you would expect but that's exactly what this reminded me of a video game the structure okay this is level one this is level two we go to like the you know the mini boss and it's a hard mini boss then we go to the total Swinton moment. Tilda Swinton. Oh my goodness. Not enough. That's probably my... You lost a star out of here by not having enough Tilda Swinton. But what's in here, she eats it up. I'm watching Michael Fassbender and Tilda Swinton sit across from each other and just talk and she delivers a monologue about a bear... I was sold. I was gripped. I was like, give me more of this. But yeah, we're watching him kind of just go through his Kill Bill checklist. And I was 
enthralled. I don't know why something so vibey and so slow was really sinking into me. I think right now we're just so indoctrinated with such bombastic, loud action movies and these spy movies and these uh, like superhero movies that are just so in your face with everything. I loved how chill this was. It was like a, a Michael Fassbender, David Fincher ASMR video. It was quiet. It was meditative. It really made you sit and ponder, especially when there's moments where he's supposed to show empathy, but one of his rules is no empathy, and you're trying to empathize. It's weird. This this definitely puts you in a, a, a mood, in a feeling. It puts you into that seat of the killer, and I really like that. There's a lot of decisions I don't agree that the killer made, but at the same time, I thought they were justified in the movie. In a sense that I, I understood this character and their point of view. It, it's hard to find a, a character like this. The killer is not an easy to like character. They don't really try to make you endear him to it. Like, there's something funny in this movie to like grab you in. There was a couple moments, Michael Fassbender's voiceovers definitely made me laugh. But there wasn't that, that moment that they're like, you have to like this guy. He's our protagonist. No, he's not. And he's not a likable character, but the movie did a great job of selling what this was, who this person was, and why we should be following him for about the two hours we were there. I think this movie was very well constructed. I know it's not going to be for everyone. It's definitely a snoozer if you are used to just bombastic things. But for me, this was just exactly the tone, the pace that I was needing right now. What I really love about David Fincher is he is a director who makes sure every department is on point. The costumings in this movie are not bold, they're not the most wild costumes you've ever seen, but I instantly know each and every character by their look, especially when we get to like the Florida like kind of gangbanger dude, then we go to what just the signature look of the killer is, then we meet Tilda Swinton's character, we meet a lawyer character, we meet a billionaire, and they're all dressed and they're all in a environment that screams out to these characters. Production design, costume design, very on point. The score, the soundtrack, I already mentioned it, it's great. But also the cinematography, the camera movements, the way the, the camera was used to move to make us feel things, the way they hid fight scenes so we can get a really fun fight scene, but you know, definitely don't have to put Fassbender through getting his ass beat by like a pro wrestler looking dude. This movie is very smart with what it does. Again, it, it's edited in a way that I think it's a, a personal preference, but I think what you see here and what's on display is very good good Fincher work. I think this man just knows what to do. There are some other things in this movie that are a bit checks, like, in the negative department. So much product placement. So I'm wearing my Diet Coke shirt. There are so much scenes where I'm like, he's like, I'm going to eat at McDonald's. And what if I get this car from this very obvious car rental place? And the way we linger on logos and things, it, it's, it's weird. I know we're in the real world, so products are going to be there, and we kind of can't really avoid it. But just the, the way that some of the product shots were shot, it was distracting. It was very much like, look at what this is, buy this pizza. Like, it, it, it was a little cringy, but that's kind of one of the only negatives I have of it is just kind of the filming of the product placement. Again, it is slow, and I, I will admit, some of the second act, what second act? You know, this movie struggled with going into the next gear. It's definitely, like I called it in the beginning, a vibes movie. You're not going to be really, you know, your your heart's not going to be racing for anything. It's just chill. It's just kind of relaxed, which is so weird when you're dealing with the subject matter. I watched so many people get brutally murdered in this movie, but it was also like, hmm, just just kind of vibing with it. it it's a very weird uh, tone and pace, and I don't think it's going to work for everyone. But again, Fincher knows what he's doing, and nothing was done on this movie by accident. It's, it's smart to see what he did, and it's definitely going to be a conversation starter for the action, hitman, thriller kind of community. Well, that is it for my review of the new film, The Killer, from David Fincher starring Michael Fassbender. Make sure you guys check it out when it comes out. I believe it has a small theatrical run before its Netflix debut. Does this scream theatrical experience? No, but if you are a fan of Fassbender and Fincher, it's some of their best work in recent years, so definitely give it a, a shot. But if you are going to watch it, uh, I think Netflix is the perfect place to stream this. Watch it a couple times. Put it on, watch it once, and then put it on in the background while you're doing other stuff so you can have the great score, the great soundtrack to really keep you going. 
What did you guys think of this review? What do you think of this film? Share your thoughts down in the comments below. Make sure you guys, oh my god, subscribe to Flickering Myth. We have a lot going on right now. We have so much going on, on the website. Award season is starting. We have a lot of awards coverage. So make sure you guys are tuned in. Don't think the, uh, the killer is going to be in the awards conversation. But there's plenty of other Netflix movies that are trying out for that. Make sure you guys comment, subscribe, thumbs up, all that jazz. And let's talk about the killer and our favorite David Fincher movies right down below.